We have explained the five routines of the soaring crane Qigong in part one. Here, in part two, we are going to introduce the other parts of soaring crane Qigong. They are standing meditation, crane walking step skills, the remedy routines. First, let's talk about standing meditation. Standing meditation is designed to clear the channels, balance yin and yang, regulate the function of qi and blood, and improve health by way of adjusting the mind, the breathing, and the body. Why is it called standing meditation? Standing meditation belongs to quiet meditation. It has been proved that standing meditation is the key to a quick cure of disease and obvious exploration of human potentials. It combines a quiet meditation with physical movements. There exists quietness in emotion and motion in quietness, which results in bringing good health and longevity. I see standing meditation occupies such an important position in Soaring Crane Qi Gong. Please explain it now. Well, let's talk about breathing first. When doing the standing meditation, use natural breathing. Now, let's tell you how to do the preparation for the standing meditation. It is almost the same as that of the first routine, except that the heels should be as wide as the shoulders. Why? By placing the feet wider than the width of the shoulders, the coccyx is relaxed. Thus, the vital energy is started in motion. Now that you have already learned the five routines and have had the vital energy started in motion, and it takes quite a long time to do the standing meditation. You will feel exhausted if the feet are kept too wide apart. Oh yes, let the shoulders relax. Allow the hands to fall at the sides naturally. Place the tip of the tongue on the upper palate just behind the teeth. Smile slightly. Keep the eyes level and open, thinking of nothing. Relax the body part by part from the top downwards. Gather qi into lower dantian. Concentrate the mind on lower dantian. Direct qi from lower dantian down to hui yin point, then back up along du mai to the da zui point. Then split the qi into two streams, direct it through the shoulders and down through the arms to the lao gong points. Dual Retrieval of Qi Turn the palms forward and relax the fingers and bend them a little. And as if holding a ball of Qi, raise the arms in front of the body with the shoulders as pivots and beam the Qi into the Tian Mu point. Open the chest by spreading out the elbows. With palms down and fingers pointing at each other, the hands descend in front of the body guiding qi down into lower dantian. When the two hands reach the level of the navel, push the hands gently away from the body with the back of the hands angled a bit toward the body at about 45 degrees. Turn the palms in to face lower dantian. Embrace a ball of qi in front of lower dantian. Then do keeping the head straight. Keep the head straight as if the Baihui point were connected to heaven by a string. And visualize that you are holding an object on the top of the head. The next is relaxing the spine. Raise the shoulders up a little and then inhale through the nose and exhale through the mouth. At the same time, relax the spine by loosening each of the vertebra. Holding in the chest, take in the arms a bit to enable the chi in the lungs to flow unimpededly. 
but not so much as to press against the inner organs. Be sure to relax the area between the two nipples. Relaxing the shoulders. Raise the elbows outwardly a bit, as if you were holding a tennis ball under each armpit and relax the shoulders. Hang down the elbows. Now look, the upper part of the elbow is hanging down while the lower part of the elbow is suspending. In this way, the channels can be dredged. Let me explain the next movement. Relaxing the wrists. With fingertips pointing at each other, relax the wrists a bit while keeping the forearms steady and then you will immediately feel the flow of chi into ten fingers. The next movement is smoothing out the fingers. Just use the mind to further relax the fingers and bend them a little as if you were holding a ball of chi in each palm. Then visualize that you are mingling the two balls of chi with the chi in lower dantian to form one big ball. With two thirds of which outside the body in front of the lower dantian and one third of which in the lower dantian. Now, let me talk about the movements of the lower half of the body. First, relaxing the waist. Use the mind to relax the section of the spine from lumbar vertebrae to sacrum. When relaxing the waist, the bottom should stick out a bit as if to sit, being sure that the knees are not further forward than the toes. When relaxing the waist, Use the mind to relax the main man point. The next movement is relaxing the hips. Just take in the hips a bit and rotate them once or twice and then the hips will be fully relaxed. Now hanging down the coccyx waily point. Visualize that there is a pendulum hanging down straight from the coccyx to 10 centimeters above the ground. Then relaxing the knees. Just relax the two knees and bend them a little, but be sure that the knees are not further forward than your toes. Then turn the knees inward a bit and use the mind to allow the chi flow through the knees. Relaxing the hips, hang down the coccyx and relaxing the knees put together is called adjusting the crotch. To adjust the crotch really round, you must contract the weighing point after you have relaxed the hips and the knees. What is the function of adjusting the crotch? It helps the chi flow smoothly in the lower limbs. Now, let's explain how to do adjusting the feet. Let the feet be flat on the ground. Use the mind to direct the chi from the shoulders, hips and ankles to the yung chuan point. When you feel the chi in the yung chuan point, use the mind to direct it down to the earth to connect with the chi from the earth. After adjusting the feet comes gathering chi into dantian. Now use the mind to mingle the chi in the two hands with the chi in the lower dantian to form a big round ball of chi. And then concentrate the mind on the shen men point, mi men point and the yung chuan point so as to relax them.
Now that we have explained how to adjust the body in detail, please watch carefully the whole process. When you have finished doing all these movements, you can bring down the eyelids and start the standing meditation. Use the mind to withdraw the spiritual light from far to near slowly until you have taken it completely back into the eyes. Lower the upper eyelids and look at the end of the nose. Then look down the nose inwards through the Shan Zhong point and along the central channel into lower Dantian. Then, be concentrative. Do you mean to close the eyes completely? No. You may either close the eyes or just leave a crack, but never squeeze them shut. If you squeeze the eyes shut, you can never be at peace or at ease. You just said to be concentrated. Do you mean to say that the mind should be focused on lower Dantian? Exactly. But, but do not focus the mind on Dantian all the time. At first, you should be very concentrative, but with a full relaxation of the body and quiescence of the mind, most of the people will have spontaneous movements. While the practitioner is standing quietly, the qi starts to flow and circulate through the body without any visible movements. This is called the inner movement of the qi. When the qi reaches some part of the body which has a blockage, it causes outer movements, visible movements. The outer movements serve to help the qi get through the channels and allow natural healing to take place. This is how spontaneous movements occur. Usually the movements are mild and simple to begin with. They will develop into complicated and more vigorous movements. What will happen after the channels are continuously dredged? As the opening of the channels and the healing of the illness progress, the movements will become slower and milder and at last stop. 
leaving only the inner qi moving, with no outer movements at all. Is it true that all practitioners will have spontaneous movements? No, not everybody. Some people whose channels are generally open may not have or basically do not have spontaneous movements. However, most of the beginners have. There's another question. Why do spontaneous movements take so many different forms? It all depends on the nature of the illness present in the practitioner. Now, look at this man. Yes, why is he patting his waist? This shows his diseased part is in the waist. In general, outer movements are not induced, but are caused by the stimulated cerebral cortex, owing to the concentration of the mind. Look, this person is placing the hands together. What does this show? This is the characteristic motion when the yin and yang qi in the body are balanced and the channels completely dredged. Look, this person's spontaneous movements are so graceful and natural as if she is dancing. Why is she demonstrating in this way? After practicing qigong for a period of time, when all the channels are open, spontaneous movements to cure disease will disappear. Instead, there only exist inner movements in some people, or there appear very advanced movements such as dancing, martial arts, or even mysterious boxing. All these are very good phenomena. Oh gosh, you see he's kneeling down on the ground. Spontaneous movements vary according to the needs of the body. Those who tend to lie on the ground need to contact the earth to get water and earth to balance the yin and yang qi in the body. Nevertheless, it is not advisable to lie down on the ground. The qigong instructor should help him control himself by focusing the mind on the baihui point. Then he will stand up. I don't think violent movements are encouraged. Am I right? Yes, you're right. The best way to avoid this to happen is to spend more time practicing the five routines until all the channels and points are open. And then, when doing standing meditation, you will not run about or have two violent movements. Another way to avoid this is to control yourself by focusing the mind on the Yung Chuan points and send the Qi from there down to the earth three meters deep. Then, your feet will be rooted. There are many ways to avoid violent movements. Oh, I see. So a veteran Qigong instructor is absolutely necessary to guide the students while learning the standing meditation. You are absolutely right. It is said that soaring crane Qigong is easy to have deviation. Does it refer to the spontaneous movements? Some people think that spontaneous movements do not occur naturally, but are the results of being induced. Some even consider spontaneous laughing, crying, running about, or jumping the phenomena of mental disorder. These people do not have the correct understanding of the spontaneous movements. Some beginners sometimes cannot come to a stop while having spontaneous movements. Is this a kind of deviation? This is a good question. Now, let me talk about the ending form of the standing meditation. When you feel that you need a stop, you tell yourself that you want to stop. You say the following words silently. Hao liao, qi gui dan tian. It means, let all the qi gather into dan tian. I'm ready to finish. 
you can also consider the time you will spend practicing the standing meditation. You might give yourself an order. I'm going to do this for 20 minutes, and then when 20 minutes have passed, the chi will naturally come to a halt. When the spontaneous movements come to a halt and you feel peaceful and calm, then do dual retrieval of chi. Turn the palms forward and raise the arms holding a ball of chi in the hands. Beam it into Tiemu point. Open the chest by spreading out the elbows. With palms down and the fingertips pointing at each other, the hands descend, guiding the chi down into lower Dantian. When the hands reach the level of the navel, Push the hands away from the body. At this time, push the coccyx backward. Be sure the nose is in line with the navel. Turn the palms in, fingertips pointing slightly down. Embrace the ball of chi and relax the shoulders. Use the mind to contract the weighing point. Draw the two hands towards the lower abdomen and then move the hands along the hips and sides and then let them fall naturally while at the same time straighten the legs. When you do the ending form, the mind should keep the track all the time. If your mind is out of the track, the chi in the body will be dispersed and will cause a very annoying feeling. Another point is, when you are drawing the two hands toward the lower dantian, you must think you are turning the big ball of thin chi into a small ball of thick chi and condense it to a small dot and store it steady deep in the lower dantian. Next movement is placing hands together to soothe nerves. Palm to palm with the fingertips pointing up, rub the hands together several times and then run them over the face gently from jaw to forehead and down and up. Then use the fingertips to comb the hair from the forehead back over the top of the head and down the back to the point called Feng Fu. Then use the outer side of the little fingers to rub the back of the ears and the part under the cheekbones. Bring the ten fingertips together under the chin and let the palms come together naturally. Then draw them down to the Shan Zhong point between the breasts. Stay in this posture for a while and then let the arms fall naturally to the sides. Open the eyes slowly and walk away. Now let's go over the whole process of the standing meditation together with Mr. Zhao Jingxiang.
crane walking step skills is part of the soaring crane qigong. The movements of this skill, which are designed on the basis of the ordinary walking steps of people, are easy to learn. Before explaining it in detail, one thing must be pointed out. This skill has a lot to do with directions, and so a piece of land as long as 15 meters from east to west with a width of 3 meters from south to north is needed for the practice. Do you mean to say that we will have to adhere to this principle? Exactly. The first movement is placing two hands together to become calm. Face the south. Place the tip of the tongue on the upper palate. Smile slightly. Keep the eyes level and open, thinking of nothing. Relax the body part by part from the top downwards. Gather qi into lower dantian. Stand with the feet touching each other and place the two hands in front of the shan zhong point. Where should we focus mind on when placing the two hands together? Just have all the thoughts cleared away from the mind and devote yourself wholeheartedly to doing the skills and the qi will flow smoothly in the channels and produce medical effects, raising arms and adjusting crutch. Making a step to the left with the left foot and bend the knees a bit to make the crutch round. At the same time, shape the hands like claws and raise the arms from the sides with some strength. The fingertips should turn inward a bit but should not be closed. When raising the two arms, you should use vigorous strength. The next movement is yin yang and eight diagrams. Starting from the left foot, you turn around the eight diagrams directions step by step. When you make the first step with the left foot, the tip will face the southeast. The second step with the right foot will point to the east. The third step to the northeast. The fourth step to the north. Then the fifth step facing the northwest. The sixth step to the west. The seventh step to the southwest. And the last step is made by the right foot with its tip facing the south. When making the 24th step, the tip of the right foot turns towards the east, ready to change the walking direction. Turn to the opposite direction and walk along the eight diagrams three times. The next movement is touring to the west through the corridor. Starting from the left foot, make 10 steps westward. With the left arm up and the right down, the two arms flutter once while making one step forward. The arms should be angled from the body at about 30 degrees. After making 10 steps, do strolling like a crane. You should start with the left foot and walk along the A diagram three times, first from the left and then from the right. After touring westward, the tip of the left foot in strolling like a crane should point to the northwest. The tip of the right foot while making the eighth step should point to the north. And in order to change the direction, its tip should point to the west. Then, start from the left foot, walk three rounds from the right. How about the movements of the arms when strolling like a crane? You should stretch the arms to keep an oblique line inside the eight diagrams and flutter slightly while strolling. When you are turning left, the arms are on the left side, and when turning right, they are on the right side. That's to say the hands are always pointing to the center.
The next movement is touring eastward through the corridor. Starting from the left foot, make 10 steps eastward. While touring eastward, the right arm is up, the left arm down. After walking 10 steps eastward, you do strolling like a crane again. What's the difference between the two strolling like a crane? The movements of the feet and arms while walking around the A diagrams are the same. Three rounds from the left and then three rounds from the right. The only difference is the direction. After touring westward, the tip of the left foot while making the first step is pointing to the northeast. Now, look. But after touring eastward, the tip of the left foot while making the first step is pointing to the southwest. Please watch carefully. The next movement is called walking freely in the universe. It is very easy. The first step is made by the left foot, pointing to the east. The second step is made by the right foot, with the tip pointing to the southeast. The third step is made by the left foot, with the tip pointing to the south. Now you are facing the south, and then mark time, 17 steps. Plus the three steps already made, there are 20 steps in all. As to the movements of the arms, first, the two arms should hang down obliquely by 30 degrees from two sides and flutter gently in time with the steps. Be sure that the hands do not come above the navel. Communicating with the universe, withdraw the right foot to the left rear Squat down while lacing fingers and place them on the left knee. Press the left cheek against the laced fingers facing west, eyes closed. Then resume the original posture. Withdraw the left foot to the right rear and do the same movements but in the opposite direction. After that, resume the original posture. Propping up the sky and beaming golden yang chi into bai hui. Turn palms upward to prop up the sky and beam chi into bai hui. Open chest to guide chi into lower dantian and let the arms fall to the sides. Rubbing palm and clenching fist. Turn the wrists half a circle while clenching fists and lift them with heels up. Hammering to shake all directions. Say hey in a loud voice while hitting the ground violently with the heels. Now let's have an overall review of crane walking step skills. Placing two hands together to become calm. Raising arms and adjusting crotch. Yin Yang and eight diagrams. Note, when walking along the eight diagrams, always point the toes downward like a crane, making steps forward. First, walk three rounds from the left then three rounds from the right. Going to the west through the corridor. The left arm is up, the right down, forming an angle from the body at about 30 degrees. Strolling like a crane. Be sure that the hands are pointing to the center and keeping them below the level of the navel while fluttering. Starting from the left foot, walk three rounds 
from the left and then three rounds from the right. Touring to the east through the corridor. Notice, the left arm is down and the right up. Do not flutter the wings violently. Strolling like a crane. The movements are the same as the previous strolling like a crane. But only your right foot is pointing to the east after the first three rounds. Then start the other three rounds by stepping forward the left foot. And when you finish, you should face the north. Walking freely in the universe. While marking time, you turn to face the south. Communicating with the universe. While placing the cheek on the knee the first time, you should face the west. And you face the east while doing the same the second time. Remember to close the eyes. Propping up the sky and beaming golden yang qi into bai hui. Prop up the sky with the hands and hold the golden yang qi from the heaven high above the top of the head and then beam it into the bai hui point. Rubbing palm and clenching fist. Hammering to shake all directions. Hey! Now, let's introduce to the viewers the remedy routines. There are eight routines in all. Remedy routine one is method of lowering high blood pressure. As suggested by its name, this method is mainly designed to help those who suffer from high blood pressure. You're right. This method is very easy. Preparation, stand with the feet as wide apart as the shoulders and pointing straight ahead, knees slightly bent. Let the shoulders relax. Allow the hands to fall at the sides naturally. Place the tip of the tongue on the upper palate. Smile slightly. Keep the eyes level and open, thinking of nothing. Use the mind to relax from the head to toes, part by part downwards, gathering qi into the lower dantian. Concentrate the mind on the lower dantian for a little while. Direct qi from lower dantian down to huiyin point and back up and along du mai to the da zui point. At this time, split the qi into two streams and direct it to the lao gong points. Then, do the dual retrieval of qi. When doing the dual retrieval of qi, the qi should beam from the local points to the baihui point. When the hands reach the level of the navel, separate them and allow them to fall naturally at the sides. 
They use the mind to guide the qi down through the legs and out of the two yung chuan points into the earth. Now let us go over the whole process. How many times are supposed to be proper for the patient to practice in a day? If your blood pressure is high, you may do the routine three to nine times in succession for several times a day. Shall we continue to do it when the blood pressure has become normal? No, you should immediately stop. Remedy routine two is called discharging turbid substances from the liver. It's obvious that this routine is designed for those who have liver trouble. Right, but this method can also be applied to those who suffer from high blood pressure or cancer. And it may also be used to discharge turbid qi from the liver after a fury. It works wonders. In this case, it is very helpful to many people. Exactly. It is a very important medical treatment and a preventive measure. According to traditional Chinese medicines, by discharging turbid substances from the liver, you can protect yourself from getting ill. And in Qigong practice, we adhere to the principle of reducing first, reinforcing second. Now look. Shift the body weight onto the left leg and place the right foot a half step forward with the heel on the ground and toes up, pointing to a tree, some wood or wooden furniture. Then, do the dual retrieval of qi. Turn the palms forward and using the shoulders as pivots, raise the arms while holding a ball of qi and then beam it into the backway point. Open the chest by spreading out the elbows. With the palms down and fingertips pointing at each other, let the hands descend in front of the body, guiding the qi through the central channel into... Now listen. Guiding the qi into the shenzhong point, not the lower dantian. Move the hands parallel to the right chest, and then descend along the right side, thinking that you are guiding the turbid substances from the liver through the inner side of the right leg. Discharge it out of the body from the Dartun point. When the hands have descended and become straight, turn the palms to face the tree, wood or wooden furniture, thinking the spent qi has been pushed into it. Then allow the arms to fall naturally at the sides. Now, let's watch the movements from the beginning to the end. I want to know if there's a limit to the number of times. You may do it continuously from 9 times to 30 times. It all depends on the need of the individual. But you cannot do it too many times. Is there an ending form for this routine? Never do any ending form in this routine. You must walk away immediately after you have done it. The third remedy routine is called touching acupoint to descend turbid substances.
this method, you use the middle fingers to touch the Tian Qing points, which are in the middle part between the shoulders and the neck. By practicing this routine, many diseases on the upper part of the body can be cured, such as high blood pressure, facial distort, backache, and expanded stomach. It is a very effective method to descend spent qi. The preparation is just the same as that of the standing meditation. Then, turn the palms forward and straighten the fingers. Using the shoulders as pivots, raise the arms to shoulder level. At this point, the two arms are of the width of the shoulders, palms upwards. Then spread the arms out to two sides, parallel to the floor. And the hands are still facing up. Then touch the Jian Qing points. First, close the fingers and fold the forearms towards the ears. And then use the middle fingers to touch the Jian Qing points and relax the shoulders and the knees to allow the turbid qi to go down through yung quan. Since only the middle finger is used to touch the jian jin points, why must we also close the other fingers? Only when the five fingers are closed can it bring dramatic effect. Then we close the wings. When you feel the qi in the yung quan, straighten the elbows and the fingers so that the arms are again straight and parallel to the floor. Bring the arms in front of you until they are as wide apart as the shoulders. Now do the dual retrieval of qi. Relax the fingers and palms and raise the arms while holding a ball of qi in the hands. Beam the chi into the Bai Hui point. Open the chest by spreading out the elbows. With palms down and the fingertips pointing at each other, let the hands descend in front of the body, guiding the chi through the central channel into the lower Dantian. Now comes the ending form. When your hands are at the level of the navel, push them away from your body at about 45 degrees. Turn palms in to embrace a ball of chi in front of the lower dantian. Then relax the shoulders, contract the hui point, and draw the hands toward the lower abdomen. When they are two centimeters away from it, move the hands along the hips and the sides, and then let them fall down on the sides and straighten the legs at the same time. Now, let's review the whole process of this routine. Is there anything which we should pay special attention to in practicing this remedy routine? Yes. Do this routine one to three times in succession. Stop when you feel comfortable. If you do too many times, you will lose your vital energy. And when you touch the Jian Qing points, use the mind to direct the Qi down evenly on the two sides, never one-sided. The next remedy routine is called directing qi into lower dantian. Some beginners who do not know how to use the mind properly so that their mind often goes out of the track when doing the ending form. 
Therefore, the vital energy is scattered in and out of the body instead of being stored in a lower Dantian. In such a case, one can use this method to collect the scattered qi and store it in the lower Dantian. Preparation of this routine is exactly the same as that of the standing meditation. The rest of the movements are not complicated. They are quite familiar to you. First, do dual retrieval of qi seriously. You must do it perfectly and slowly. The mind should follow the qi and be sure that the vital energy is being stored into lower Dantian. When the hands reach the level of the navel, do the ending form from the beginning to the end. Now I have a question here. Will it do any harm if we do it many times? No, it won't do you any harm if you do it many times. But you must do it correctly and seriously. Then the more you do, the more you benefit. On the contrary, if you do many times but carelessly, the results will not be satisfactory. It is only a waste of time and energy. Now let's go over the whole process of this routine. Some beginners find it very hard to use their mind properly. It is almost impossible for them to direct their vital energy into the lower Dantian. Therefore, they can try another remedy routine called gathering qi into lower Dantian from the eight directions. By using this method, you can gather the qi from one direction after another until you get all the good qi around you.
The movements are as follows. Do the directing qi into lower dantian eight times, starting by facing south, then southwest, west, northwest, north, northeast. East and southeast. After finishing the eighth time, while facing southeast, turn to face south again. Must we do directing qi into lower dantian once again after turning to face south? No. After turning to face south again, you should do the following movements in the first routine of the Sorin Crane Qigong integration of six directions, namely, Raising a ball of qi to the top of the head, gathering yang qi from heaven, and collecting yin qi from the earth. Hold a ball of qi in the hands and raise it up and beam it into the bai hui point. Lace fingers overhead and turn palms up, using the cervical vertebrae as the pivot. Move the shoulders first to the left forward and back and then to the right forward and back. Stretch the cervical vertebrae. With the thoracic vertebrae at the pivot, repeat the motion above and stretch this portion. Finally, concentrating on the lumbar vertebrae, Repeat the shoulder motion again, then stretch the spinal column and straighten the arms. Keeping the head between the arms, bend to touch the ground between the two feet in front of the left foot and in front of the right foot respectively to collect in chi. Finally, straighten the body. Then, do dual retrieval of chi. Turn the palms forward and raise the arms while holding a ball of chi in the hands. Beam the chi into the bai hui point. Open the chest by spreading out the elbows. With palms down and fingertips pointing at each other, let the hands descend in front of the body, guiding the chi through the central channel into lower dantian. You must be very concentrative while guiding the chi down. Then push the hands gently away and turn the palms in and draw them towards the lower abdomen to gather the qi into the lower dantian. Now let's go over the whole routine. Facing south, do directing qi into lower dantian. Turn to southwest and do it the second time.
Turn to west and do it the third time. Turn to northwest and do it the fourth time. Turn to north and do it the fifth time. Turn to northeast and do it the sixth time. Turn to east and do it the seventh time. Turn to southeast and do it the eighth time. Finally, turn to south again and do holding chi to the top of the head, gathering yang chi from heaven and gathering yin chi from the earth. Then do dual retrieval of chi and the ending form. This is a very good method of bringing chi from all directions and from heaven and the earth. If you practice seriously, in the long run, you will mingle yourself with the universe and bring yin and yang qi in good harmony and increase the vital energy in your body. That means even if your qi is not scattered, it will do you a lot of good by practicing this routine.
Some beginners have a swimming head and a swinging body after having spontaneous movements, and they regard it as a kind of deviation. What shall we do to help them? This kind of phenomenon does exist, but it has nothing to do with deviation. It is caused by the scattered chi in the body. Anybody who gets angry may have trembling hand, so it is nothing frightening. Drawing qi from five central points into lower dantian. What do you mean by central points? I mean the five central points in the palms, the soles, and on the top of the head, respectively. When we draw qi from these five ends, all the scattered qi on root, and in every part of every corner of the body, will be swept clean and collected into lower dantian. This is the most effective way to collect the scattered chi in the body. The preparatory movement and dual retrieval of qi are just the same as the above one. When the hands reach the level of the navel, push the hands gently away from the body. In about 45 degrees, at the same time, push the Wei Lu point as if to sit. Turn the palms in to face the lower Dantian to embrace a ball of qi. In front of lower Dantian, keeping the upper body straight. It is just like the beginning movement of the standing meditation. Right, but the following is not the same. When drawing qi, it is only an unseen mental activity. There is no physical movement at all. To start with, use the mind to draw qi from the central point of the left palm and direct it to travel along the inner side of the left arm through the left shoulder and the shanzhong point down to the right side of the lower dantian. Bring the qi counterclockwise around the core of the lower dantian once. The radius is five centimeters. The next skill is the same, but in the opposite direction. 
Use the mind to draw qi from the central point of the right palm and direct it to travel along the inner side of the right arm through the right shoulder and the shenzong point and down to the left side of the lower dantian. Then bring the qi clockwise around the core of the lower dantian once. The radius is 5 centimeters. After that, use the mind to draw qi from the central point of the left sole and direct it to travel along the inner side of the left leg and up the left side of the lower dantian. Then, bring the qi counterclockwise around the core of the lower dantian once. The radius is 5 centimeters. Then use the mind to draw qi from the central point of the right sole and direct it to travel along the inner side of the right leg by and up the right side of the lower dantian. Then bring the qi clockwise around the core of the lower dantian once. The radius is 5 centimeters. The last mental activity is to draw qi from the center of the top of the head and direct it down through the central channel into the lower dantian. Then Draw it clockwise around the core of the lower dantian once. The radius is 5 centimeters. Shall we do dual retrieval of qi to finish the routine? No, you will only have to relax the shoulders. Contract the weighing point and draw the two hands towards the lower abdomen until they are 2 centimeters away from it. Move the hands along the hips and then let them fall naturally. Now, let's go over the ending form. Drawing qi from five centers into lower dantian is a very good way to train the mind step by step. In the long run, you can collect the qi scattered in the body very easily. There is another method which is specially designed to correct deviation and prevent deviation. It is called collecting yang qi four times from the left and three times from the right. Some people make it a shock while practicing Qigong, and the Qi is scattered all around them. They may feel tired, sleepy, distracted, frustrated, and even have mental disorder. They will be infatuated. Can senses be restored by using this method? Surely you can. As you know, the Dazui point is the place where all the young channels meet, and this is also a point with which we adjust our essence Qi and mind. The method we are talking about now is to restore the senses and mind by adjusting the Dazui point. This is a very effective method.
Do preparation first, then due retrieval of qi, and then holding a ball of qi. Isn't it the same as drawing qi from five central points into lower dantian? They are the same at the beginning, but the following movements are different. After holding the ball of qi, use the mind to withdraw the spiritual light from far to near, slowly, until you have taken it completely back. Lower the upper eyelids and look at the end of the nose. Look down the nose, inward, through shan zhong, and along the central channel into lower dan tian. The mental activity is the same as that in the standing meditation. Then use the mind to extend your spiritual light from the eyes to a point three meters in front of you, and then turn the head left, ninety degrees. Your spiritual light following. In this way, you sweep over a sector of three meters long with a ninety degree angle. Right. Then turn your head to face front, withdrawing your spiritual light. And seeing inward through the central channel into lower Dantian. How many times shall we do it? Turning your head left and then back is called once. We should do four times continuously. Oh, I see. Then we turn to the right three times. Is that right? Absolutely right. But notice, each time before you turn the head. You should draw your spiritual light up from the lower dantian through the central channel and out from the shanzhong point to the eyes, and then extend it to the point three meters in front of you, and withdraw it back along the same route to the lower dantian. If you do not follow this instruction, this method won't work. What shall we do after that? Then, do the ending form by relaxing the shoulders, contracting the weighing point, and draw the qi into lower dantian. Let's watch the whole process.
Let me repeat. Each time before turning the head to the left, draw the chi from lower dantian to the eyes, and then extend it to the point three meters in front of you. Notice, each time after turning your head back, withdraw your spiritual light into the lower dantian through the shenzhong point. Notice, each time before turning your head to the right, draw your spiritual light from Dantian and then extend it to a point three meters in front. Each time after turning your head back, withdraw your spiritual light into lower Dantian. Four times to the left, three times to the right. Plus together, there are seven times in all. The last remedy routine is to utter certain sounds. It means to utter certain sounds to adjust certain blockaded parts or treat certain diseases. As the nature of diseases varies, the ways or the sounds may vary. It all depends. Uttering the sound, shh, can soothe the liver, calm the nerves, and invigorate the circulation of blood. Uttering the sound can calm the nerves, ventilate the lungs, and regulate the flow of vital energy. However, this method must be taught by a veteran instructor. Do not do it without the correct instructions. Never give wrong instructions to others. By now, we have explained the major instructions and the functions of the standing meditation the crane walking step, and the eight remedy routines. Yes, we have explained in detail. But what is the relation between these skills and the five routines of soaring crane qigong? The standing meditation, crane walking step skills, and the remedy routines are part of the soaring crane qigong, which are only the basic skills, while the five routines are the elementary methods to dredge the meridians and accumulate vital energy. The standing meditation is a major means to cure diseases. The crane walking step skills and the eight remedy routines have some special effects on curing diseases and preventing deviation. If you persist in practicing soaring crane qigong, you will have the qi in your body ascend and descend systematically, and you will live in good harmony with the universe. You will enjoy a good health and longevity.